I'll show you how I made this large resin ocean inspired artwork and be sure to stick around to the end because I'll show you this technique in more detail when I actually use it on the final layer. And letting that spray paint dry for about three days, I was ready to pour my art resin. I use art resin because it doesn't have any VOCs or fumes. And I use this white sand by Lores Expressions mixed in with some pink, iridescent jade and a beautiful turquoise blue colour. And for the darker shade of the water, I'll use teal blue. They're all by Lores Expressions. And I'm pouring them strategically at that end because I'm tilting the board to blend the colours. I want to capture the motion of water, that flowing movement. So tilting the board is a really great way to do that. And it also helps to blend that sand colour into the water to create a nice effect. And I'll use these clear quartz points from La Res along with some rose quartz crystals, pink opal and green adventuring crystals. Now this pink champagne by La Res, I'm going to just drop it around those pink crystals so it looks like the colour's bleeding out. And I did actually use that colour for the sand as well. I mixed it into that white sand colour in both those shades. There's two shades of sand, the lighter one and the dark one. The lighter one I also added white, angel white to it. For the watercolours, you can see that it's transparent. So I made sure my colours weren't really opaque. I didn't mix too much pigment into it. And I chose colours that looked like they were going to be a bit more transparent than others that maybe have a bit of white mixed into them, like a lighter colour. This beautiful lucky green colour, I'm going to put that around the green crystals so it looks like they're bleeding out as well. And now I'm going to use a bit more of that blue, the turquoise blue, to mix in with those colours so they look like they're connecting with the water and they're not separate from it. And now I'll just place down some rose quartz crystals, some tiny ones, and some beautiful Amazonite crystals from the res. And for a bit of bling, I'm just going to place a small amount of crushed mirror glass chips. Now, I don't want to overdo it with these, but I just love putting them on because it just kind of elevates pieces and brings them to life. Now that it's had time to sit, there's a lot of bubbles, so I'll use the blowtorch to pop them. Now here comes that technique I was telling you about. Now this is the second layer, and I'm using this bathroom cleaning foam. It's called Easy Off Bam. I'm not sure if I'm using the right one or not. I saw this technique online and I wanted to give it a go and now I'll spray it immediately with some spray paint. Now this is a copper spray paint and when you spray it on, it starts to dissolve it and you get that lovely um, textural look. I'm going to just be very, very mild with it. I don't, my first time using it and I'm using on a massive <laughs> large painting that's what I do. I don't test on small ones. I just go straight into it. So I'm just being very careful. And once you've done that, you leave it for about a minute and then you wipe it off just with a dry cloth. And some of it wipes off and some of it's left there and you're left with this lovely pattern, as you can see there. And that's exactly the same technique I used on the underpainting. Now here I'm just pouring clear resin as a top coat. It's art resin again, and I did sand between the layers. You've got to sand it so that the resin has um, some tooth, some surface to stick to. Well, I hope you enjoyed that new technique. I certainly did. Let me know what you think of it, and should I try it again? And have you tried it? Give me some tips. I'd love to learn a bit more about it myself. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. My name's Michelle Tracy.